Hello everyone and welcome to another video on the Tolis Airbus A321 and today something slightly different we're going to look at the ground speed mini function which uh, is something that I think is a really great feature on the Airbus uh, and it's not all that commonly known about so uh, hopefully this can give you something new uh, that you'll see in your Tolis flight simulator at home. As ever, this is not for any real-world use, and it's just for our use in our home simulators. I am a real-world Airbus pilot, so hopefully this can bring you some extra context on your home simulations. So let's get started. For this video, we're going to be flying an approach uh, into Heathrow again, EGLL uh, runway 09 left. And we're going to have, as you can see, some turbulence and wind, and that's where Ground Speed Mini comes into use. Um, it is a feature that is designed to keep the airplane with enough energy for the approach, even in big variations in the wind, uh, in particular loss of energy. So we're going to see exactly what that means and how that function works. So for now, we are just beginning our approach into Heathrow, nine left. And as you can see, we are sort of on a slight downwind heading and I've got a nav path all the way through to the ILS, which will then fly, which is the India Alpha Alpha. It's a standard three degree ILS. Uh, and we'll be doing it using the approach mode as normal. So what is Ground Speed Mini? Well, Ground Speed Mini is a system where the Airbus will change the V approach target, the speed target, according to the ground speed uh, of the aircraft. And what it will do is if you have a stronger headwind, so at the moment we have 60 knots, almost 70 knots uh, wind from the east, southeast, but on the ground, and I've set this up in X-Plane to be the same, um, the wind you can see here is uh, 070, roughly 11 knots. So there's a 50 knot difference there in the wind. Now this is unusual, but it does occasionally happen. What we're trying to achieve with Ground Speed Mini is to keep the energy in the aeroplane. So if we were to then slow down to RV approach of 143 knots with this current wind, if we flew that speed down the whole ILS, as we descend, we are losing headwind it will lose about 50 knots of headwind. So that energy is going to be taken out of the aeroplane and the engines will have to spool up and up to keep us at the approach speed. And if there was a big change, suddenly we could find that we have a low energy event and the speed gets too slow. So what we'll see is that when I manage the speed, the magenta target will move up and down with that wind. It doesn't work in selected speed. So as you can see here today, I've got a selected speed of 220 knots. As a result, if I was to select the app, then that would just be a stationary target. It also only works when you are looking at the final approach. So it, it doesn't change other speeds like our green dot speeds or anything like that. So let's have a look at what it means. So if we start to configure for our approach as normal, and you can see on the PFT, if I now go to manage speed, we know the target should be green dot. And I can see down here, the magenta target is 143, which is my V approach. And the reason is my ground speed is not really significantly different because there's not much headwind on my approach here because I'm pointing across the wind. But as we turn into the wind slightly, you start to see the speed increase. So now we've got a little bit more headwind. It's going up 160 knots. So it's already really fast. And that's because there's a difference between the speed on the ground and the speed where we are. And as we turn on to final approach, that's going to become even more noticeable. So now I'm going to descend to 3,000 feet and get ready for the ILS. So something we have to account for is how do we make sure that we are still flying a safe approach because it could be hard to put the flaps out and we'll see why that is. So now I'm uh, descending, let's put out flap two, uh, sorry, flaps one, uh, and you'll see that the new target is S speed. And we're in open descent, so the speed will come back and we can see that our V approach target is really high because of that strong headwind. As we turn onto final, we'll get an idea of what it's going to be. The magic of this system is that if we have a big gust of wind, so if we found ourselves on approach and the wind went up by 20 knots uh, or something similar, the approach target speed would sense that increase in wind and it would compare it to the wind speed we we're expecting on the ground. And when it sees that one is bigger, so the, the wind we're getting at the moment is bigger, it will increase the V approach by that difference. And that way, the engines, instead of coming back to idle um, on the approach, they will keep the thrust on. So as a result, if you're flying down an approach on turbulent day, you may see your VAP moving up and down, and that is normal. And what really matters is that you're stabilized and you have the correct wind in here 
to make sure that it knows what the wind speed is on the ground. If I have the wrong wind in here, it will see a bigger difference and it will fly the whole approach at the wrong speed. So it's quite important you put in the, the wind into there. So we're coming around onto final now. Let's arm the approach as we do normally, lock star. And we're coming in at 11 miles, so no problem there. We'll have a bit of a level segment. Something ground speed mini won't do is it won't command an overspeed. So it will go to the flap extension speed plus, uh, sorry, minus five. So it'll go within five knots. So if I put out flap two, and even here it's fine because in the 321 we have uh, certain 321s are fitted with slightly higher flap limitation speeds. So there's flap two, glide slope star, and we got the go around altitude of 3,000 feet. And now you can see it's targeting 180. So if I was to fully configure now, we would simply fly down the approach at this speed. And what's going to happen is, as we get nearer to the ground and that wind reduces, because I know it's going to reduce to 10 knots, this speed will reduce. And as I've said before, it's simply the difference. So a 10 knots on the ground, 50 knots here, so there's 40 knots added to VAP. So VAP is 143, so that's going to be 183. And there we can see 183. And we'll compare that as we descend down the approach. What it can mean is that flying down the approach is a little bit unusual in the head bus because we are currently quite nose low and we're quite fast. And air traffic may have demanded uh, that we do 160 knots. All I have to do is select 160 knots. And if I select it up there, we can fly down to 160 and that's fine. But now, if I was to suddenly manage the speed and go back to where it was, the speed will jump up and down to wherever the ground speed mini target is. In that case, I need to be careful because I don't want to do that on final approach because I'll destabilize the approach. So what I can do is just have a look at this ground speed, uh, oh sorry, look at this wind speed and compare it and then decide when I want to move it. So there's about 20 knots between my actual V approach and where I am now. So when that wind is at 20 knots above the ground wind, which will be 30 knots, then I could manage the speed at, and it will be about 160. If I just manage it now, you'll see that I do that, and we're 20 knots slow, then we get a huge amount of thrust, and this is not a very stable approach. So let's configure. Gear down, flaps three, lights are on, and now you'll see that flap full is very close. So if I did that, this would be a reason you may not want to stay in ground speed mini, because you are very close to overspeeding, and in turbulent conditions like this, I would uh, certainly want to be a bit further away. Fortunately for us now, the uh, speed is reducing. Um, we've got 40 knots now. So we're sitting about 170. And when that's down to 30 knots, it'll be sitting about 160. Uh, so there we go. So as I said, the real magic of this system is that if we got a big gust on final approach, uh, the airplane will keep the engines spooled up. It won't just reduce them to idle because as that headwind increases, the target speed would increase and then when it reduces the target speed would reduce again. If I was just in selected speed now I'd be back at 140 knots and I'm then going to lose 25 knots of energy on this final approach and we could find that the airplane slows down so you'd have the engines having to constantly spool up and it's just not as safe. So I think it's a good system. It's not a system that all airplanes have. Some more traditional airliners, um, so your uh, Boeing 737 and so on, will simply mean that you would need to select a different approach speed. So you could just say, well, I'm going to fly my approach. I could just select it and put it somewhere sensible. But then I have to account for that in my performance. Whereas a ground speed mini, it accounts for any gusts. It keeps us stabilized. And it means that as we get towards the runway, we're going to have the correct uh, approach speed. So I can just leave it in. We could even uh, let it auto land today, which I think we will, just to show you um, how, how well the system works. Now we've gone through 30 knots, so we're down below 160 on the speed. And it would probably be quite a turbulent day if you had these big changes in wind on final approach. <laughs> Not sure where our airport has gone. It seems to be missing. There we go. And now, by using this system, we reach the threshold of the runway. And we're pretty much at our V approach, all ready for a stabilized final approach to land.
And now we're just going to get those pallets and roll out. It is worth noting that for ground speed mini, you need to be thinking about the headwind. So it doesn't work in crosswinds. So if my wind was directly across the runway, so in this case from the north, and going from 10 knots to 30 knots, ground speed mini wouldn't move at all because it's only based on the headwind loss and increase. Uh, because that's where the energy changes will come from. So in a really turbulent crosswind, it won't have much effect. And in those cases, you may consider increasing your V approach if performance allows it uh, by a couple of knots to keep yourself away from the VLS and the low speed warnings. So for this approach, we have a slightly different situation. The wind speed here is about 30 knots with about 10 knots on the ground. So there's a, a increase in about 10 to 20 knots on VAP, which we can see here. So that's not such a big issue. And this is not too uncommon to see on a, a breezy day when flying the Airbus. So how are we going to manage this and what are we expecting to see? Well, this time, as the gusts increase, we'll see the ground speed mini go up to meet it and then reduce. So we're now fully configured on final approach. And I'll just make sure we've done the final part. So that's on, landing lights are on, and hopefully we can in the cabin crew and now what we can see is the engines are sitting at around about 56 55 percent which would be pretty normal for a fully configured final approach and then as that wind speed goes up and down and i've set it to increase and decrease by about 10 knots uh, with a 10 knot speed on the ground and you'll see that sitting at 20 knots and then uh, increasing we get an increase in our speed trend because as the headwind increases the airplane naturally gets extra energy and then instead of reducing the engines to idle to try and keep the speed where it should be uh, at VAP the ground speed mini will actually keep the engines roughly where they are because the target increases and the idea is that our ground speed wants to stay as we can see here about 135 so the airplane will try and keep that constant and that way the energy is sensible and safe and it should help us avoid any serious low speed events that's all for today's video. Hopefully that showed you something uh, different about the Airbus and one of the, the features that it has that I think is uh, really good. If you have any questions, please do put it in the comments or join our Discord and we can discuss things there uh, and hopefully get uh, what you're looking for out of your Airbus simulator at home. Otherwise, uh, if you'd like to subscribe, there'll be more tutorials, more live streams coming up where we're going to continue our little tour around Europe uh, and uh, plenty more videos to come in the future. Thank you very much for watching today and I hope to see you again in another video soon.